if you're wondering, Ken is here. His camera's just very dark. <laughs> exactly. You just can't see him at all. He's got a little rumbly in the tumbly. Oh, gosh. What was, what, better. Was, what was that from? That is Winnie the Pooh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was very, um, it was very unfortunate that I missed out on the interview with Tris because I did get to view a little bit of what you guys did. And I have to say, he seems like a genuine- Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. You got to view a little bit of it? Well, I watched the whole thing. You're not good enough thing. to watch the whole thing? I did, I did watch the whole thing. <laughs> okay. I watched it in clips. <laughs> I, wa- I did. I watched the entire thing. I watched it. In cl- I, I could probably tell you every single step of the interview right now, but he was just so genuine. And he had this laugh about him that made me laugh. It was one of those contagious laughs. Oh. And for those of you who are about to witness what uh, I did, you will smile the whole time because Wait, he what, smiled. We're going to witness what you did. <laughs> What did you do? I'm very confused right now. You're such a literalist. (laughs) Possibly. I was able to watch this man who didn't lose a smile for almost the entire hour of this interview. Um, It was just incredible. He's got one of those smiles. It could be like an ad for, you know, for a dentist or something. He has one of those perfect smiles. Definitely. Or like a nice, like a, a toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, he does. He has a very interesting uh, story. His life is very, very interesting. You're not kidding. Uh, if I were to have been on that interview, I would have dug a little bit deeper into the whole uh, Footloose thing. In what way? I, I think I wanted to know if he had an opportunity to actually... Uh, hang with the actors in the movie and uh, did he go to any sort of award ceremonies like the Oscars Um, did he participate in that I I wanted to know all of that stuff I thought that was pretty interesting and I think that Footloose is one of those things that is timeless and my children and my grandchildren will be speaking about Footloose and I think that those are questions that I wanted to, uh, to ask him. Well, I have his email if you need to get in touch with him. <laughs> I'd love to do that. <laughs> I would love that. So, so I don't know that he got to hang with anybody at the Oscars. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I know at the end of the tour, he wanted to hang himself from playing <laughs> that song so much. <laughs> He did mention something like that. It was kind of like overdone for him, which I respect that. But for the fans who uh, love the movie and who love Kenny Loggins, I think that that's kind of an interesting question. It's funny. To me, that song is as much as popular and as big as it is or was or whatever. Nine nine times platinum. Nine times platinum. Um, Like... I don't think that's a definitive song of Kenny's material. I think Kenny's I, material uh, is very different. Totally 100% agree with you. But I think that is what makes it more interesting is that it's not the typical Kenny type of music. Um, the song, are you familiar with the Kenny Loggins song, This Is It? This Is It, that one? Yes, that's the one. No, wait, that's <laughs> not it. I'm kidding. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> So uh, such a witty character you are. (laughs) I'm I'm whippy. I'm very whippy. (laughs) Let's check out Tris talking about Footloose, shall we? We shall. Duke, you want to hear the story about Footloose, don't you? Absolutely. Tris, okay. Okay. Well, uh, Kenny, being such a perfectionist and such a uh, hands-on kind of guy, uh, he had written the song while we were on the road, knowing that it was most likely going to be the theme song for this movie, this as yet unknown movie uh, that was going to be coming out. And uh, so he had us at sound checks, which he still does, because I, I, I've worked with Kenny now since I left Chicago. I actually spent about a year with him uh, the year after I left Chicago. And uh, all 
sound checks are not really sound checks, they're rehearsals. So we, <laughs> and hours long too, you know, oh my gosh. And always changing arrangements and doing, tweaking this and tweaking that, you know, on every instrument. So, uh, but the results, you know, I mean, my God, are, you know, irrefutable. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't argue with, with uh, his records, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so anyway, um, we were sick of that song. I mean, in short, we were just done. Man. And, and this is before it even came out. Yeah, yeah, before we were <laughs> even off the road to record it, right? We hadn't even recorded it yet. And, uh, <laughs> but we, we had, were that well rehearsed with it, right? And at that point, it was Nathan East on bass, the great wow. Nathan East, the great Buzzy Feeton on guitar, right? Neil Larson on keyboards and Steve Wood on keyboards as well. So, I mean, it was a killer band. These guys, their pedigrees, you know, <laughs> were amazing already. And uh, so, anyway, we went in and uh, to the record plant in L.A. and cut it in two takes. One was for sound and the second one was the take. <laughs> That's awesome. And because uh, we just, I mean, we knew it inside and out. And then I went back and overdubbed the Simmons, you know, drums on the drum breakdown there, you know, but uh, cut it first all, all acoustic. And, uh, and I remember walking out of the record plant with, with Nathan and we both looked at each other and said, man, that's the last time we'll ever hear, have to hear that piece of crap ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And then, then the thing, take, I mean, as you know, it took all often was number one everywhere in the world at the same time. And I have to admit, when I, I couldn't change the radio dial and not hear it on every station, I liked it a little better, you know? <laughs> and Tris, and Tris how, do you feel, how do you feel knowing all that? And you just said that it is gone for the viewers. Can you explain what does that mean, nine times platinum? What does that mean? Well, that numbers? means nine million records sold. Wow. And... And it is the only single, or 45 anyway, because it was those, those actually existed when we did the song. It was 1984, I think, was the year. If you like, I'll show you the, the award they gave me. Sure, Duke, let's see it, right? You want to see? Absolutely. Yeah? Okay, hold on. Wow, wow that folks. is cool. That is beautiful. <laughs> I don't know whether you can see it in the light, but we can see it. That's beautiful. Wow! Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, we. Uh, What's what was uh, that other one? What was that other one that was on? Oh, the that wall? was. This is uh, that's Richard Marks. You know the song "Hold On to the Night." It was number, another number the one record. The ballad, yeah. yeah. The ballad, and then at the end, the drums come in, the whole band, and all that. That nice. that was me on that. So that was triple platinum. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man. So I've been so blessed, you guys. I I I just I've been so blessed to to have worked with all these incredible singer songwriters and and or bands, you know, too. Uh, my entire career, I've just kind of. I don't know how it happened, but I was the one that got the brass ring, I feel like, you know? And, you know, you know uh, Tris, I want to ask you, from, from all your experiences with that song, it just seems to fascinate me. What It's 2020. What do you think, like, when you're sitting around with Mary and it comes on? Do you, do you have any specific thought? Do you go back in time, or are you beyond all that? <laughs> well, yeah, I've got a lot of thoughts, actually. First, it, it never ceases to amaze me how I'm, I'm still thrilled, even though I, God knows how many times I've heard the song over the years. <laughs> but, but any record I'm on, actually, when it's on the radio, it's, I mean, it still just blows me away, just like it did the first time I heard myself on the radio. I love that. But I think because, for me, the radio was so important growing up. You know, I had my ear glued to to the radio or the record player, you know, at all times. And, and uh, so uh, to me, that was just it was too much to dream that big, you know, that one day I might be on the radio. You know? So so God, it's still just 
for me, it just really, really excites me. Well, uh, forget the radio for a second. Did you see the movie in the, in the theater? Did you? Did yeah. You see, and were you I sitting did. in the theater thinking, "That's that's my snare drum. That's my bass drum." That's yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's amazing Triss's um, story with his lung cancer Ugh. was kept so under wraps. He did such a great job of keeping it under wraps. He and really did. You can hear it, the smoker in his voice, even though he hasn't smoked for you know over a decade. But um, man, I, I knew I knew one person who had lung cancer and died from lung cancer. Um, mm-hmm. It's a rough. It's a rough go, so I'm grateful he's better. Sure is. And Very rough He looks go. great. He looks so fit. Yes, he really does. Uh, he still looks fit, and I think that he clearly, part of the reason that he beat the disease was because he was fit to begin with. So he had that strength in his body to fight through the whole process with the chemo. He said he had chemo radiation and surgery, that's very intense stuff that he went through. Yeah. And I found it actually quite interesting that he wanted to hide it. I understand that he didn't want sympathy, empathy, whatever it may be. But I hope that he didn't feel any sense of uh, shame uh, for, for being kind of st- struck with this terrible disease. But I, I would have asked him that question too, is did that have anything to do with the hiding of the disease. And I hope not because clearly there's nothing that he could have done um, to, at that well, point Well, that's not time. true. He could have not smoked. Oh, right. I was going to say, he could have right. not smoked, but yes, from that point, correct. So there, you know there are smokers, a- no smoking. <laughs> I was just about to say it. You and I are on the same brainwave today. I was just about to say, smoking is no good. I don't mean to sound like I'm a preacher, but... It has caused so many deaths. I'm preaching. (laughs) So many deaths. I have never, ever once put a cigarette in my mouth. Not once. It's just, it's it's bad. It's just bad. And in every way, it's bad. I remember when smoking was allowed in bars and I would play clubs and I would load my drums into the car. And if I left them in my car overnight, which I did many times, my car would reek of cigarettes. Of course. I, I didn't smoke. It was just such a drag. But I'm such a, um, such, <laughs> no pun intended. It's such a drag. <laughs> so actually, now that we're going through like this whole COVID thing, and in New Jersey where we are, they only have the outdoor dining. People mm-hmm. are smoking. They don't. All the places don't have designated areas for oh, smokers. So wow. I'm there. I'm I'm choking up there, breathing in the cigarette smoke and. I have actually asked people to please, if they're going to smoke, just not right in front of the band because I can't be taking in a breath and uh, not oh, being able to Oh, you're such a sit. diva. You're such a diva. <laughs> I've tried to live a very healthy lifestyle. I don't need everybody else to smoke. <laughs> it, excuse me. I'm trying to sing Janis Joplin up here. Do you mind? <laughs> How is your health? Oh, I'm fine, man. I'm doing Good. great. Thanks, dude, Good. for asking. I'm I'm uh, I'm actually 11 years out from cancer now, from lung cancer. God bless. That's amazing. That is. Oh amazing. man, and you know, I didn't tell anybody at the time because I didn't want all the sympathy and or or anybody to be overly concerned, like particularly in Chicago, because I didn't want to be replaced, you know. But I only had a 15 percent chance of making it to five years. Wow. Yeah, because it was not early stage and it was radical treatment, chemo and radiation and surgery. And wow. it was stage 3A. So anyway, I just celebrated 11 years. And That's right. my- God bless. Thanks. And my oncologist actually used the C word. He said, looks like we have a cure. Because they're really hesitant to say that with regards to lung cancer in particular. It's one of the bad ones. And But at five years, they'll call it curative. So <laughs> now I get, I graduated, you know. That's awesome. So, Good yeah. for you. Man, oh, man. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Amy, other than playing drums, we, know, we now know that Trist plays another instrument. Before you found out, would you have guessed it is what it is? And 
the viewers will find out shortly. If it wasn't what it is, what would you have thought he played? Uh, bass. I think because bass and drums kind of go hand in hand with each other, I gotcha. would have expected that he would have played bass. Gotcha. Yeah. I was really, really surprised by his answer when he said it. Until uh, he gave the reasoning was that he really likes blues. And, and I'm sorry. Well, when you like blues, you, you like you like the harp. <laughs> so. So let's cut to Tris and check it out. Now, Duke, I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Tris doesn't just play drums. He does play another instrument. Do you have Do you, do you know what it is, or do you want to venture a guess? Uh, I know what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's I, talk about that. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about that. I'm are curious. You, are you, yeah. Tris? Are you a big blues guy? Is that how that came up about? Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely, Duke. I love the blues, man. And it was probably precipitated, you know, I mean, of course, listening to, you know, all the British, and so back ass words, I know, but listening to all those British bands, right, that, you know, the Stones and so many of the Yardbirds and that who incorporated harp, right, mm-hmm. and, and uh, or harmonica, right, in, into their records. And, uh, but that piqued an interest uh in me in the blues of course and and uh and then paul butterfield blues band i i got into and man that just rocked my world i i had to learn how to play harp because i just love the sound of it so much particularly amplified you know with a mic and you know <clears throat> it sounds like a dinosaur coming at you you know when in the right hands or mouth so <laughs> so uh I, I i do play harp and uh, I, I kind of, there again, I've, you know, gone through periods where I practice a lot and then I just let it go for a while and then I practice again. So I'm not like, you know, as sharp on harp, uh, so to speak, as I am on the drums. But, God, I actually, uh, uh, Huey Lewis and, and the News and Chicago were on the road together. And Huey, as you might know, is a mm. great harp player. And... Uh, he, Bill Champlin told Huey that I played harp, too. So he went, no way. So he said, you're coming out and you're going to play on the encore. We're going to trade for Oh, sweet. And so I was like, wow, man. So sure enough, man, he had another beautiful vintage, you know, tweed Fender amp out there and a bullet mic and a harp in the key for me, the right key. And so we started exchanging fours. And man, that was such a gas. Man. That's awesome. That was so much fun. That was a that was a fun tour with Huey and uh, and Chicago. Yeah. For those of you who enjoyed that interview as much as I did, please find us on Facebook at the Upbeat Hang or on Instagram at the Upbeat Hang Podcast. Give us a review and subscribe to our pages so that you can follow us and learn a little bit more about what we do and about who we interview. It's all about entertainment stuff. And I just want to say that the interview with Tris, I think that both Ken and Duke did such a great job. I wish I got the chance to really speak with him and meet him because he just seems to be a really genuine, kind a uh, happy go lucky kind of a guy. So I hope Tris, if you're watching this, that you and I get to speak at some other time. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. On the upbeat hang. Okay. I want some honey in my tummy. It's a good treat. <laughs> so let's get into it. Shall we? Let's, Listen to, no, that, I, why do I say shall we? I'm not in ye old <laughs> merry England. So I was a pl- okay. pl- It's amazing Kenny's drummer, Tris, who we're talking about. Um,